Yeah, this was work done in collaboration with my colleagues, colleagues from New York University in New York, and in Abu Dhabi, and we'll be talking about VPN security today. So, yeah, why do people these days use a VPN? Well, one reason is because people like to watch movies in a different country, but today we're not gonna focus on that because VPNs are also used to protect your traffic. For example, um, Depending on your threat model, your access point or router might be compromised or malicious, or even uh, ISPs, you might not trust all of them. And even if you do trust them, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, there have been uh, Wi-Fi attacks in the past that would allow someone to break Wi-Fi and still see your traffic. Now, you might be saying, but yeah, but we have HTTPS today, so is a VPN really needed? And there can be cases where using a VPN is definitely still useful, because even if you use HTTPS by the IP addresses you visit, it may still be possible to identify the websites you are visiting, um, or you may still be using plain text DNS, or you have the server name indication, which would still allow someone to track your website visit. Um, and even at this conference this week, we saw some new academic attacks against HTTPS and TLS, um, and it may be implemented improperly by some of your apps. So a VPN is definitely some nice extra protection uh, in certain use cases. So the idea is, of course, a VPN will set up a secure tunnel, uh, and it will defend against untrusted Wi-Fi networks or malicious uh, ISPs uh, or core internet routers. And the goal of our today is not to break the cryptography or to investigate the cryptography behind these VPNs, but to see if we can somehow trick the client into simply sending data outside of the protected VPN tunnel. And as a teaser, yes, we found that this is possible by manipulate, manipulating the client's routing table, and our attacks will be independent of the specific cryptographic protocol being used. So to explain this, let me give a quick introduction about how VPNs are uh, typically configured. Well, not all VPNs are configured like this, but we will see a large majority are. So if you look on Linux, how it routes packets, once your client is connected, you might see something like the following. You will have a networking rule here that says, okay, by default, send everything via the TUN0 interface, and the TUN0 is like a virtual network card that represents your VPN tunnel. So by default, everything is sent to the VPN tunnel, but there's often two exceptions. The first exception is that many VPNs allow you to directly access the local network while you are using the VPN, because that's very useful so that your printer stays accessible. A second exception is that traffic to the IP address of the VPN server itself is also not again sent through the VPN tunnel because then you have a routing loop. So traffic to the IP address of the VPN is also just directly sent to its destination. One more thing I need to explain is that uh, in our attacks, we also assume that DNS is configured securely. Basically, once you connect to a network for the first time, the local network will assign its own DNS server to your client, unless you have configured one yourself. And yeah, that cannot be trusted. So in practice, a VPN client will also configure its own DNS server. And we assume that DNS is sent through the VPN tunnel itself. Um, and yeah, we also assume that other routing attacks against VPNs are prevented. Now, these two exceptions can both be abused to leak uh, basically arbitrary traffic. So how does that work? Well, let's say that we're in the following situation here. So we have our client, our and victim uh, on the right side. We have the target website to which we want to leak traffic uh, here on the left side with the IP address 1234, and we have our VPN. What's our threat, uh, threat model in this case? Well, we assume the adversary can act as a rogue Wi-Fi network uh, on trick the victim into connecting to this Wi-Fi network. And what we, we will do as an attacker now is, in hindsight, actually very simple. We simply assign um, the following IP address range to the local network. So in our attack, we want to 
leak traffic to the IP address 1234. So we basically say, oh, the local network here is using IP addresses from the range 1234.12.1234.254. Now, once the client is connected to the Wi-Fi network, it will immediately create a VPN tunnel. That will work just fine. It will then configure a secure DNS server. Everything is fine. On the routing table will then look like the following. By default, it will send everything over the VPN tunnel, except traffic to the local network. So if we make some space here, what happens? Well, say we visit a random website that goes through the VPN tunnel, and the VPN server forwards it to its final destination. But if we visit target.com, we use our secure DNS server to look up the IP address. The IP address is 1234. And the victim will think, oh, this server is actually located in my local network, meaning I don't have to send it through the VPN tunnel, and you can just intercept the traffic. Now, we tested this against uh, a lot of VPNs, so clearly you don't need to be able to read this, but we tested about 200 uh, VPN servers, and just to zoom in a little bit, we tested both free and paid VPNs. We tested them on Windows, Linux, macOS, iOS, and Android, and we found that a large majority of them were vulnerable. So on some of them, we could directly leak traffic. Some of them were secure. There's also a few special cases, um, and for that, I will have to refer you to the paper. But the summary is that we can see the following. If we take a VPN app, for example, on Android, then they are typically the most secure. Linux is also okay-ish, but if we look at Windows, and especially iOS, we can see that the situation is really quite horrible. On iOS, every single VPN client was vulnerable to this attack. And why is that the case? Well, on iOS, you can defend against this attack, we noticed, by using this relatively new API parameter called include all networks. But this API parameter was only relatively recently introduced, I think maybe two or three years ago. And on top of that, if you enable that parameter, VPN vendors told us that then the connections becomes uh, unreliable, meaning vendors are very hesitant to adopt this parameter. Um, now, that basically means that VPNs on iOS right now remain less secure. I do want to put that in context. There has been already some previous work on iOS which showed that their VPN API is not ideal. Uh, but unfortunately, we made it even worse. So that covers the first attack. We also have a second attack that abuses this second routing exception. And yeah, here we again assume the same situation. Uh, we assume the adversary is a malicious Wi-Fi network. Once the victim connects, it will look up the IP address of the VPN server. So it will send a DNS request for vpn.com. And we as an adversary will now spoof the DNS response. And remember, this is possible because before a VPN tunnel is, est is established, the victim is still using an insecure DNS server. And we are now spoofing the IP address of the website that we want to leak traffic towards. Now, the victim will then try to create a VPN tunnel with this spoofed IP address, but that's no problem. We can simply redirect it to the real VPN server. The connection will be established. The client will set a trusted DNS server, and the routing table will look like the following. Everything is sent over the VPN tunnel, except traffic to what the victim thinks is the VPN server that is sent directly through the destination. So if we make some space here, if we now visit the random website, yeah, that is sent through the VPN tunnel as normal. But if we visit target.com, the victim will again now use the secure and trusted DNS server to look up the IP address of target.com. We'll get the reply 1234. And because of our routing table, that is now not sent through the VPN tunnel, meaning we can intercept that traffic quite easily. So here again, we performed various uh, experiments, and I'm just gonna give a summary here. Basically, we found that mainly built-in VPN clients of uh, operating systems are affected. So for example, on Windows, uh, macOS, and uh, 
also the built-in VPN client of iOS, they are vulnerable to this attack. We also saw that the legacy built-in VPN client of Android 11 on below was vulnerable. But the good news is that from Android 12 on the above, they implement routing more securely and more reliably. And that basically means the attack is not possible um, against Android 12 and above, at least against the built-in VPN client. Another interesting observation is that this second attack typically doesn't affect VPN apps on iOS on Android. And the reason is that because a VPN app typically either hard codes the IP address of the VPN server or uses HTTPS or uh, DNS over uh, TLS or HTTPS to get the IP address. Now, the impact of this attack here is that in this case you can leak traffic towards a single IP address. And you might think, okay, that reuse, reduces the practicality or the practical impact of the attack. But in practice, what you can do is that one IP address that you can leak traffic towards, you can make sure that that is, the v, that is the DNS server that the victim is using once the VPN tunnel has been established. And if you can then leak DNS uh, requests, you can spoof responses, and that allows you to still intercept a lot of the traffic of the victim in that case. And in case that's not possible, if you cannot spoof uh, the DNS server, you can always repeat the attack, um, but the user might then notice the attack, of course, because it's constantly disconnecting and reconnecting. So what are possible defenses? Well, the first is you can disable local network access if the local network is using public IP addresses. And for the server IP at attack, you should basically just send all traffic over the VPN tunnel except traffic generated by the VPN process. So you should use basically what is called policy-based routing. You shouldn't make your routing decisions purely based on the destination IP address. We reported this to CERT CC. We also contacted uh, some vendors. And yeah, most vendors acknowledged this issue. Um, I think currently only Windows is not yet deciding to patch it, but all the others have acknowledged it. So that brings me to my conclusion. We found two widespread flaws in VPN clients. In hindsight, the attacks are actually fairly easy, but we found that a large majority of them was vulnerable, which in a sense is quite surprising. And I would say one of the causes is because these VPN protocols are not always properly integrated into real world systems. Basically, if you have a VPN protocol, they specify uh, the cryptographic operations, but they don't give recommendations how you should configure your routing table. The defense was, yeah, more carefully configure your routing rules. And it would also be very useful if the operating system would provide some kind of API to more easily create VPN tunnels, because now every VPN vendor itself needs to configure the routing table uh, and then yeah, we see here in practice that not every VPN vendor does this securely. And with that, I conclude my talk. So if there's any questions, feel free to ask.